Hello, and welcome to Behavior and Communication Part 2, Adapting to Unexpected Behaviors and Applying Strategies in the Classroom, presented by Lisa DiNardo, School Social Worker, in compilation with Adrian Miranda, Speech and Language Pathologist. This video contains personal and or confidential information. Any disclosure, copying, storage, or distribution of these materials is strictly prohibited by the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, Policy P094, Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy, and Operational Procedure PR676, Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Agenda. In part two, the presentation will focus on the three main tenets of behavior management in the classroom and at home, by teaching strategies that children can ultimately use to manage their own behavior, reinforcing or promoting the behaviors that are desired and preventing the escalation of behaviors. This part of the presentation will use examples of tools that can be used in the presentation and at home by providing practical handouts and resources during and after this presentation. This will also allow you to identify next steps in supporting students and determining where to access resources within the TDSB and the community. Behavior. What is it communicating? Behavior is a reaction to an unmet need. Challenging behavior occurs when the expectations being placed on a child exceed their capacity to respond adaptively. Some children lack the skills to handle certain demands and expectations. Three big ideas. Teach, investigate, prevent. The three tenets of part one focus on teach, investigate, and prevent. TEACH focuses on teaching expected behaviors through an individualized approach as it is related to the function of the behavior for that particular student. Behavior Investigation Investigate focuses on why the behavior occurs and how to avoid unexpected behaviors. This approach looks at informal observations and formal methods through ABC logs or the positive expected behavior worksheet which was provided. It tries to determine the patterns of behavior, underlying needs or difficulties, triggers, and matching teaching strategies to each student. Behavior. What is it communicating? Prevent focuses on the tools and strategies which can be used in the classroom to minimize the occurrence of unexpected behaviors which will be shared in subsequent slides. The One Call Method is a tool for staff which focuses on observing and noticing changes in student behaviors, seeking out key information, validating the student's experience, and seeking out supports to assist students. The One Call Method uses a particular acronym. Observe, know your student's typical behavior and responses. Notice, what are the changes in their facial expressions, behavior, or mood of the student? and explore by seeking out information about the changes. Connect by making a connection with the student or support network of that student. Ask how you can help, actively listen and validate the experience, and link the student to other supports in the school or the community. Exercise. Josh is struggling to have his ideas recognized during group work and continues to interrupt another student. How would you respond? The first thing to keep in mind is what is this behavior communicating that is getting in the way of the student's learning or the learning of others? When we're deciding to intervene, keep in mind that some students may look off task but are using a strategy such as movement to help them. You can speak to him privately and say, Josh, I really want you to share your ideas, but you were talking where Laurel was talking. You can also point to a visual to remind them of the class expectations of taking turns talking. Explain why an alternative behavior may be better, or ask the student to demonstrate understanding either by practicing it or sharing examples. When they follow the redirection, provide feedback and positive reinforcement. Teach. 
A responsive classroom. A responsive classroom is a student-centered social and emotional learning approach to teaching and discipline. It is comprised of a set of research and evidence-based practices designed to create safe, joyful, and engaging classrooms and school communities for both students and teachers. Reframing classroom management helps to understand and reframe problematic behavior or unexpected behaviors, helps to rethink power and control dynamics, helps a teacher to become proactive in their approach and responds to the child rather than to the behavior. Take a few moments, think of a student who displays unexpected behaviors. Rename one or more of his or her challenging behaviors as positive traits. For example, stubbornness is determination, talking back as honesty, constant movement as energy. Identify the positive traits you want to encourage him or her to practice. Put it into a positive sentence. So for example, uh, Matteo, I like the fact that you were trying to be honest, but instead of interrupting, how can we frame this in a more positive or respectful manner? Stuart Shanker talks about five steps of self-regulation as follows. The first is to reframe the behavior. The second is to recognize the stressors for the student. The third is to reduce the stress within the classroom environment. The fourth is to reflect upon your own practice and your strategies. And the fifth is to respond. Steps for managing behavior. First, use the acronym ADAPT, means to act calmly when behavior is escalating by using deep breathing and self-talk. De-escalate the situation by using a calm voice, giving space, using planned ignoring or redirecting, acknowledging feelings through validation and active listening and displaying empathy, problem solving collaboratively by being open-minded and flexible, and thinking reflectively in terms of what you could have done differently or to offer choices. Teaching strategies. Strategies for challenging behaviors. Be clear and consistent with regards to expectations. Give students fixed choices. Teach coping strategies. Build a strong relationship with students. Plan for triggers that may occur. Conference privately with the student and teach social skills. Respectful redirection is a quick in the moment strategy or response to provide students with corrective feedback. It grabs the student's attention in a calm manner using neutral body language and clear words. And students will understand the expectations and return to task. Teaching strategies, replacement behaviors. When you figure out some of the functions related to a specific behavior, it is important to teach a replacement behavior which serves the same function. For example, if a student starts to bang his or her fists on the desk because they're finding reading frustrating, it would help the student to learn to ask for a break. Addressing underdeveloped skills, such as providing further reading support. Teaching empathy and respect. Children and teachers enter the classroom with their own social location. Engage students in circumstances and experiences that are different than their own to help them develop empathy. Respect is not just about cooperation, but acknowledging children's differences and validating their perspectives. Incorporate problem solving, group play, and collaboration to help students practice empathy skills. Reinforcement strategies. The power of praise. It is a method of engaging and motivating students. It decreases behavior challenges, increases motivation to learn, and using praise regularly enhances the teacher-student relationship.
positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. Reinforcement helps to increase the likelihood of a specific behavior. Identify the behavior you're trying to increase. Choose reinforcers that are specific to that student. Watch for the target behavior and deliver the reinforcer immediately. Keep in mind, reinforcement motivates students to do what they're capable of doing. Positive changes require students to know what positive behavior is and how it feels to be positive. To be positively reinforced, motivation and interest are key. Token economy is a concrete incentive system that is individualized to the student and their needs. It is very important that success is guaranteed during the initial implementation to establish buy-in. You're using external motivators to move towards reflection and discussion, so an internal motivation system. How does it feel when you earn extra computer time? When you tell your family you had a good day, how do they respond? Token economy is most effective when used to reinforce specific positive behaviors. Thank you, Aaliyah, for sitting on the carpet with your legs crossed. You earned a sticker. In terms of a token economy, other things to consider are the ability of the student and the skills that they have to demonstrate the target behaviors. The goals that are established that may require more positive reinforcement and whether the system is easy to use and uses interesting tokens. Also, to, what you need to consider, how are you introducing this system? What training do you need to give to others who work with the students, such as a special education teacher, a gym teacher, a French teacher, parents? How are you collecting the data? What are you using it for? Are you planning for generalization or change? So are they using it at recess time or in other environments? This is an example of a behavior intervention chart. In the first area of the chart, it lists a number of unexpected behaviors. In the second area of the chart, it lists some types of interventions that focus on the collaboration between the student and the teacher in terms of their relationship, but also in terms of role modeling, appropriate options or choices, including the types of consequences or responses that would assist students and prevent negative results. This chart discusses some examples of teaching strategies that can be used to reinforce positive behaviors and prevent unexpected behaviors. In essence, it focuses on the relationship the student has with the teacher and how they can collaborate together to minimize unexpected behaviors. It incorporates a wide range of strategies, including leadership opportunities, forced choices, visual aids or schedule, positive reinforcement, and token economies, which have been discussed in the slides in this presentation. However, the next slide will discuss in detail one of the options called setting limits. Setting limits, explaining which behavior is expected and why gives reasonable choices with consequences, allows time for the student to follow through, and allows the teacher to be prepared to enforce their consequences. Use of forced choices can be effective with students who may present as defiant or oppositional, and empower students to be in control of making decisions with boundaries set up by staff. This is an example of a use of forced choice. For example, if a student refuses to complete classwork, a positive limit would be, after your work is done, you will have five minutes of free time to talk, which is something that we would like to happen. As opposed to a negative limit, if you don't finish your work, you won't have any free time. Validation or reinforcement. It validates the student's concern by naming and describing the problem. It, you can add a few examples to show that you understand where they're coming from. And you finish with words of support and a helping hand. Let's see if we can figure it out.
redirect, problem solve a solution together, or remind them to use their skills or coping strategies. Prevention. Visuals can be considered a prevention strategy. Visual schedules help students to see what is expected of them and also allows them to remove completed tasks so that they can see the progress that is being made. A visual timer can help decrease student anxiety or frustration during longer tasks, and it can help students to prepare for the termination of a favorite or preferred activity. It also helps to solidify classroom routines and allows students to act independently. This is an example of a visual schedule, and this is an example of a visual timer. This is an example of an individual visual schedule for a student. Nonverbal cues and clues. Use of hand signals to cue students. A nonverbal cue or photo could be more helpful than raising your voice. Volume meters. A pre-discussion around the expectations of each level the volume meter should occur before its use. Visual behavior expectation. Here is an example of one. Social stories are used to teach particular social skills, such as identifying important cues in a given situation, taking another's point of view, understanding rules, routines, situations, upcoming events or abstract concepts, and understanding expectations. Social stories use a specifically defined style and format, and you can find some of them if you Google Carol Gray. Social skills training teaches children about empathy and taking the perspective of the other, including teaching them coping strategies such as deep breathing, using a stress ball or glitter jar, or creating a calm down space in the classroom. Physical activities. Movement breaks. Students show us in many different ways that they require movement and it is often seen as disruptive. However, brain breaks or movement breaks assist students with their attention and focus. It assists with transitioning from one activity to another and it's often their body's response to stressors. In addition, Goodwin et al. talks about movement breaks helping to reduce stress, increase productivity, boost brain function, and assist with social skill development, including student wellness, energy level, personality, and mental and emotional cues. This is an example of Go Noodle. Mindfulness and inner focus. According to Gary, mindfulness assists with focus and attention, stress management, coping with anxiety, and helps children to become more aware of their own emotions. An example of this that can be used in the classroom is the Minds Up curriculum from pre-K to grade eight. Changes to the classroom environment. Environmental modifications can be anything such as chair bags, modifying the computer area, using shelving, stand-up desks, or angling the teacher's desk in a particular way to help with organization. The Behavior Strategy Resource Guide will be provided to you during this presentation. Using the worksheet you completed in part one, identify the skills that the student you chose demonstrates, whether it's often, sometimes, or rarely. Then pull out the handout from today's package entitled Behavior Strategy Resource Guide, where you will find the skills are broadly grouped together and linked to different strategies that you may wish to try. The hyperlinks will lead you to videos and online resources to explain the strategy further. Select one or two strategies that you wish to try for the student. After you have a chance to try them out, you can record your observations in the outcomes column. Next steps, programs which help students to develop self-regulation, conflict resolution, and perspective taking skills are 
the zones of regulation, the minds of curriculum, second step, SNAP, and class dojo. Here are some resources that were used in the compilation of this presentation. Thank you for watching. For more resources, please speak with your school support team members or visit SickKids Centre for Community Mental Health and School Mental Health Ontario.